Hello friends, my name is Eric Cloward and welcome to the Stoic Coffee Break. The Stoic Coffee Break is a weekly podcast where I take an aspect of Stoicism and do my best to break it down to its most important points. I share both my successes and my failures and hope that you can learn something from my experience and make your life a little bit better. This week's episode is called Digging Deep, Uncovering Your Unconscious Motivations. Do you always act the way that you want to? Do you struggle to accomplish what you set out to do? Do you find it challenging to make choices that are in line with what you think you want? Today I want to talk about learning to understand why we often make choices and do things that don't line up with what we think we really want in our lives. No man is free who is not a master of himself. Epictetus. A few months ago, I was reading a book called Existential Kink by Carolyn Elliott. Now, it's this really great book about embracing and accepting your shadow self. And I've talked about it a few times on the podcast. But one of the most important and most interesting ideas I got from this book was the idea of having is evidence of wanting. Now, what this means is that we need to recognize that even though we might say that we want some other kind of result in our lives, we usually get what we actually want. And usually these actual desires are things that we are unaware of. Simply put, we have a lot of unconscious desires and goals that drive our lives. We may end up dating the same kind of person, even though we failed in relationships with this type of person in the past. We might want to eat healthier or drink less alcohol, but then we end up eating the same bad things or drinking more than we had planned. We may skip the gym, even though the effort to get there really wouldn't be that difficult. We have the same arguments with our partners, even though we say that we don't like to argue. What I'm getting at is, what if we are making choices to get the exact thing that we really want, but we're just unconscious of what we really want? Until we make the unconscious conscious, it will rule our lives and we will call it fate. Carl Jung A common example of this is for people that grow up in chaotic and unstable homes. They might have hated it and have a desire for a more stable home life once they get out on their own. They say they want a partner that is calm, secure, and stable, but find themselves dating people that are much more chaotic and similar to what they grew up with. They might find their behavior incredibly confusing because it's not what they think they want. So why would someone continue to add chaos back into their lives when what they're craving is stability? For many people in this situation, they find a stable home life to be very challenging because it's not what they're used to. They don't understand the rules of the game. Dating somebody that is more like what they're used to allows them to feel comfortable because it's familiar. They're used to the excitement of a chaotic home. If they're used to the adrenaline rush of uncertainty, then a stable home life can feel exceptionally boring. Throwing their world back into chaos might be the only way for them to feel what they consider normal. The unconscious goal in this case is familiarity, which is more important than stability. Another example of where our conscious goals and our unconscious goals diverge is when we get angry at somebody. Usually when we get angry, it feels like it's just this instantaneous or automatic reaction, and it's like something that we don't have control over. Later, after we cool down, we're disappointed with ourselves because of our behavior. We may say that we didn't mean to get angry, But I think this is kind of a dishonest mental revisionism of what actually happened. We did mean to get angry, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten angry. Think about it this way. We all have people that we would never display this kind of anger towards. We're able to control it. And whether that's because we respect them enough or because we would suffer some other kind of consequence, like losing our job or maybe we have a fear of violence from them, we can all choose to hold back our anger. So why would we hold back our anger in one instance and lash out in another? It's because in each of these cases, the goals are different. When we lash out, our goal is usually to try and control the other person. When we keep our anger in check, it is to avoid consequences of a confrontation. We are just unaware of or are dishonest about our real goals. And until we are aware of what our real goal is, then we'll probably just keep repeating the same behaviors and creating the same results. So how do we get to know what these unconscious goals are? How do we figure out what we really want? The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. 
Plato. In episode 231, I discussed a model of thinking. And basically, in any situation, we can use it to break down what's really going on. And I'll summarize the model here for you, but I recommend going back to that episode for a more in-depth discussion. Basically, in any situation, there are circumstances, and these are the factual elements, and usually are things that we can't control. Then we have our thoughts about those circumstances, and those thoughts create our emotions. Those emotions are the things that drive what actions we choose, and the actions that we take create the results that we get. Now, one of the best ways of understanding our unconscious goals or why we really do what we do is to work backwards without judgment. We need to look at the results we are getting and the actions and the choices that we make that cause those results. Then we have to understand what we were feeling and thinking at the time we made those choices. Now, this is probably the hardest part because we often have trouble recalling what we were feeling or thinking in the heat of the moment. And this is why it's important to be open to the possibility that we honestly weren't thinking at our best and that we were letting the emotional feedback distort our perspective. This is because our ego tries to protect itself. We often convince ourselves that we were thinking or feeling something different than we were. We don't want to own up to what we really thought or felt because we don't like to think of ourselves as that kind of person. We'll rationalize or ignore what was really going on in our mind. And this is why examining things without judgments is so important. When we can do this kind of exploration, then we're not worried about placing blame. So we need to approach this like we're on a fact-finding mission. So like I talked about in the example above, somebody who grew up in a chaotic home may feel confused or ashamed that they keep dating people who cause them lots of drama. But until they are open to accepting that they may in some form like the drama because it's exciting and familiar, it's going to be hard for them to change. When we walk backwards from the results to the actions, to our emotions, and then to our thinking, then we're much more likely to get to the root of things. Know thyself. Socrates. One of the best ways to practice this kind of exercise is meditation. And I know that I talk a lot about it on here, but I find that it's an indispensable tool for getting to understand your own mind. Just like any other skill, mastering our mind takes practice. And meditation can be difficult because our minds are generally in a constant state of stimulation. Now for some, meditation is just too boring, and to sit still for any length of time feels incredibly challenging. But when you practice this skill, then you learn how to be aware of your mind and its thinking. And once you get to know your mind, then you are able to quiet your mind so that you can focus on the things that you want to. You can direct it in a way that is much more helpful for you. When you take that time to be quiet and just observe your thinking, oftentimes you have inspiration that just pops out of nowhere. You'll have insights and solutions to problems. You'll have creative ideas that you were just moving too fast to see. When you get quiet, your mind has a chance to show you things that it's been working on in the background. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Marcus Aurelius Another exercise that is extremely helpful in our unconscious exploration is journaling. Sitting down and trying to get the contents of your thinking on paper is another way to help uncover things. I know for me that sometimes I really just need to brain dump all the thoughts in my mind in order to give me some distance from them. It's kind of like having a picture that is simply too close to be able to see it clearly. By getting things out, I'm better able to see what's really going on. I can often see connections that I wasn't able to see before. When you get things out on a page, it also frees up your mind to not have to try and hold on to those things as much. You know that you have it in a durable form, so you don't need to worry about remembering those ideas. You're able to refer back to it at a later time and hopefully find more inspiration and make connections when you're in a good headspace. I find that doing meditation and journaling back to back is often incredibly helpful as well. There are times when I meditate first to give my mind the space to just let things be, and then afterwards take the time to capture those thoughts and ideas in my journal. Sometimes I find that journaling before meditating is useful because it helps guide my mind towards ideas or thoughts that I've been pondering on and that I'm worried about. And then my mind is able to make interesting connections in a relaxed state. Our minds are a pretty amazing set of processes, thoughts, ideas, emotions, and unconscious desires. And getting to know ourselves and our deep and often hidden motivations can be exceptionally challenging. 
For me, stoicism has been crucial for being able to understand and accept the parts of me that I may not want to see, but are there nonetheless. With a focus on a non-judgmental way of viewing the world and yourself, you have the tools to explore who you really are and work on accepting every part of you. It is with this self-awareness and self-acceptance that you are better able to find more personal peace and you're better able to make changes that you want in your life. And that's the end of this week's Stoic Coffee Break. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and thanks for listening.